Hello and welcome back once again to this class. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about application architecture and design issues, which are applicable when you try to develop and build solutions and applications using cloud-based platforms and technologies. Let us start by trying to understand the relationships between various entities that are involved in application design and development. So an application is typically built on or for some sort of a computing platform. Computing platform here could be cloud based or a plain virtualized or a traditional non cloud non virtual by computing platform. What we mean is the operating system and any application stack and other components which you will use to build the application and plain virtualized here means that you have just created a virtual machine in house which is running on your regular desktop or your regular rack and blade kind of a data center. And cloud based means you are using some sort of IES pass kind of a platform to build your application software. And typically a software application is designed by using the architecture knowledge that you already have accumulated by experience or by enterprise memory means which is documented within your organization that these are let's say the best practices that you should be using whenever designing some kind of a application to address some business needs or any other design patterns or tactics, etc., or which are available in public domain. And typically a software will have some non-functional requirements, which you have to build into the software. That is, you have to make sure that certain quality attributes are built into the software. Quality attributes means, for example, scalability, security, maintainability, etc. And you have to ensure that certain levels of these quality attributes have been designed into the application. That is your application is able to meet certain levels of these quality attributes. Now your ability as a designer to build these quality attributes into the software depends on how you leverage the characteristics or properties of the platforms on which you build these application, right? For example, cloud based platforms may have certain characteristics, which may make it easy or difficult to realize certain quality attributes. In that sense, you need to understand the characteristics of different platforms for building the quality attributes into the software that you are developing. So this diagram explains what are the different concepts or entities involved when you try to develop applications. And this is a high level diagram. It is not listing each and everything that is involved in application design and architecture. We are trying to highlight only those entities which are relevant from our discussion standpoint in this lecture as well as in subsequent lectures. So again, just to give an overview of this thing. So we have some software applications that we want to build and its requirements are such that you have to implement certain levels of various quality attributes into this software. For example, you have to ensure that it is scalable, it is secure, it is maintainable and so on. And how you build this kind of software, you make use of the architecture knowledge that you have accumulated by your experience. This architecture knowledge could be the best practices that are documented or your knowledge about various design patterns and tactics and so on. And you also have to have knowledge of the computing platforms so that you can leverage the characteristics and properties of these platforms to build the quality attributes that are required into this application. So how do you build quality into the applications that you build on different platforms, particularly on cloud? So there are different things here that interplay. First of all, you need to understand the quality attributes, what is meant by them and what is the specific quality attribute requirement for the software that you are trying to build and then look at what are the and then identify what are the challenges involved in trying to implement and realize these quality attributes into the software that you are building. For example, we already have seen in previous lectures that what are the quality attributes and what do we mean by them? Examples are scalability, availability and so on. And there are challenges. For example, you need to handle failures in your software in order to make sure that the software is the application is available and reliable, for instance. And similarly, interference. Interference 
particularly in a multi-tenant environment like cloud becomes very important when you want to make sure that your application works in a consistent and reliable manner. And similarly, security, ensuring that the data that your application processes remains secure, right? And there is no unauthorized access either by the co-located applications or by the vendor itself. So in that sense, you have to make sure that various security checks and balances are in place and how do you build them. And in order to address all these challenges, you need to have a knowledge of various tactics which you can use to address these challenges. And these tactics may be already known to you or there may be some newer set of tactics which you may have to devise or discover so that they can be applied to the cloud-based platforms. That is the scenarios where you build applications using cloud-based platforms and APIs and components, etc. For example, one of the key characteristics of cloud-based platforms, as we have seen in one of the previous lectures, is that you have software abstraction of hardware resources. Your virtual machine is nothing but just a set of files, which you can examine, move around by all by programmatic means. This is a very powerful idea which you can exploit to address several of the quality attributes needs. So in subsequent lecture, we'll give more details of how do you exploit various characteristics of different computing platforms to address different types of quality attribute needs. So overall, you need to be again uh, to reiterate, you need to be aware of the quality attribute requirements of your software that you're trying to develop and what are the challenges involved in realizing these quality attributes into the application and what possible tactics can be used or devised by using the characteristics of the platform that you are trying to work on. Now, since we are talking about particularly cloud, it's worthwhile to note the differences between cloud and non-cloud environment, particularly when it comes to application architecture and design. Cloud vendors may address some of the issues which are faced by your regular non-cloud data centers and development and deployment environments. We have seen the characteristics of different types of clouds and one of the key problem that it tries to address, most cloud platforms try to address is that they let you provision the computing resources, server resources in a self-service and on-demand manner. That is on a traditional scenario where you don't have any cloud technologies uh, implemented or you are not making use of any virtualization or cloud technologies. Anytime you have to provision a server resources, you have to go through the regular cycle of procurement of the hardware infrastructure, install soft operating system on top of it, make sure that it is updated and patched and then install software stacks that are required for you to build a particular application and so on. And all of this is a manual task which you have to do every time you are trying to build your applications from scratch and again certain enterprises you may have solutions which again make this kind of operation faster for example you may have uh, pre-created images of hard disks which are quickly dumped onto a new disk and you are ready to go but still this is requiring some manual effort by contacting some human actors within your organization which will take your request and still try to procure the hardware and so on Cloud-based platforms eliminate even this kind of a overhead. Another thing could be physical security, let's say, right? Within the enterprise, you may have some level of physical security, which is limited by the resources that you have. Whereas on a cloud-based service provider, they may have a better quality of physical security where they have dedicated resources, which, which are skilled, especially for providing that kind of a security. Another point is hiring and training data center personnel. Managing data centers is a very specialized skill, at least more specialized than let's say writing programs, where you have to manage different types of uh, uh, resources, hardware resources, cooling, power utilities and so on. And if you are a small to medium enterprise, you may not want to incur the costs or the overhead of managing a data center. So these are some of the things which cloud vendors try to address. And this is one of their value adds, big value adds that they bring into the small to particularly small to medium enterprises. However, several other issues still remain the same. For example, network intrusion uh, detection and uh, mitigating them. If you take a virtual machine on a public cloud vendor like Amazon or Microsoft Azure, 
you are responsible for making sure that your operating system is free from any vulnerabilities your configuration of firewalls etc is set appropriately so that somebody cannot intrude into in, into your machine and do some malicious activities so that still remains your uh, responsibility if you are going for a infrastructure as a service type of a cloud and similarly isolation between various types of environments typically in a software development life cycle you may have to have multiple environments starting with the development environment where programmers uh, initially code the application and then move it to some sort of a test environment internally and then put it on some staging environment before it's finally released to a production environment and there has to be some level of isolation amongst between these different types of environments and this still remains your responsibility to ensure and as we have repeatedly seen in previous lecture installation of updates and patches etc on the operating system and other software components that you may be using for building your application that still remains your responsibility whether you are on a cloud or your traditional data center however there are certain things which are new or have changed in case of clouds in the remainder of the foils in this lecture we will look at all these items at a higher level and in subsequent lectures we will be going into more deeper details about each of those so what are the key issues which are specific to cloud based platforms i think security has been one of the biggest issues for several organization uh, they considered it as the biggest issue that prevented them from moving to cloud or adopting cloud based particularly public cloud based uh, platforms the related things to security and privacy are multi tenancy that is when multiple tenants or consumers are hosted on a shared infrastructure on a public cloud for instance so there are chances that they may interfere with each other by some manner and similarly making sure that access keys and credentials are secured access keys for the cloud based infrastructure that you hire or rent out from some public cloud vendor you need to make sure that access credential and keys which you use to connect to and set up the channels between the cloud and your in house infrastructure they may be appropriately protected and managed so that remains an, uh, that that brings additional uh, challenge today when you are trying to move to cloud similarly dependency on geographic and legal jurisdiction that becomes another uh, added point to consider because certain laws in certain uh, political jurisdictions may allow certain local agencies unrestricted access to the data that is hosted within their within their territory for instance the patriot law in the united states allows certain us agencies to demand access to the data which is stored in their territory in the united states territory and if your application is sensitive to this kind of a situation you need to take appropriate measures to make sure that your data still remains private to you regardless of whether it is hosted in any territory another thing is failure managing failures in traditional data centers has always been an issue but when it comes to cloud there are additional concerns there are additional parameters that you have to take care of and the failures related to data consistency are again an important thing particularly in cloud software upgrade related errors even though they they are they are similar to what has been existing in non cloud platforms but there are certain um, aspects of it which have changed in the cloud platforms and yet another important issue is performance for instance network latency is a key issue because the communication between your in house and cloud infrastructure has some latencies which are more than the communication latencies between the in house components uh, for example if you have a three tier application web application let's say where you deploy the web server on a virtual machine which you have rented on amazon and your back end let's say a database server is being hosted on your in house servers then certainly there will be more latency when you try to connect from your web server in amazon into your in house database server compare it with a situation where all of these tiers that is your database server as well as your uh, uh, application server and web server etc if they are all hosted in house you may have lesser latency than splitting the tiers into a cloud as well as an in house infrastructure and another thing is 
the speed of provisioning what it means is that when you try to request resources from a cloud provider how fast you can get access to the resources let's say you want to launch a new virtual machine to take care of the additional request load that your exp uh, that your application is experiencing now it may be important to provision these additional resources at a fast enough speed and how fast a provider can provision these resources is going to determine your application's quality similarly elasticity that is whether you can over or under provision on demand and how fast it's kind of related to the first bullet that we talked about the previous bullet of how fast you can provision it's kind of related to elasticity and another very important is uh, very important point is interference performance interference due to virtual machine co-location a cloud provider may co-locate several virtual machines belonging to different types of uh, consumers running different types of workloads on a shared hardware now someone may be running a type of a load which results in some interference some degradation of performance in the co-located uh, virtual machine so these are the scenarios which are important the situation of performance interference is pretty similar to uh, living in an apartment building. Let's say if you get a neighbor who every day gets up at 2 a.m. in the night and uh, switches on loud music and starts making loud noises, that is interference into the neighbor's lives. So the similar thing applies in case of virtual machines that if a cloud vendor deploys wrong type of virtual machines on the same underlying hardware in such a manner that they are causing a lot of interference to each other, then the situation may not be very pleasant. So you want to take care of all these concerns when you move your applications to cloud. So let's summarize what we have seen. So the first thing is that characteristics of a platform on which you build and deploy your application, your software application, they impact various aspects, particularly the quality attributes that you can achieve into a application. And also cloud platforms have characteristics which are unique to them and certain issues of course which are unique to them and in order to address the non-functional requirements of applications you can exploit or mitigate the characteristics which these cloud platforms bring with them particularly when you try to build different quality attributes into the applications you have to look at the characteristics of different characteristics of different cloud platforms and then by using the architecture knowledge try to find out how they impact various quality attributes of the guest application that you are trying to build on these kind of platforms in the subsequent lecture we'll look at these uh, key issues one by one in more detail and how do you address those when building applications on cloud platforms thank you